So here I want to go into a little more detail on a distinction that I make in certain videos, namely the distinction between what I call hard and soft punctuation. And it's something that's going to be relevant on questions like this, where you have a mix of, let's say, a period, comma, and no punctuation. What that tells you is that it's going to be really important to focus on essentially the number of independent clauses in the sentence with the blank. Now, in this case, there is just one sentence, or at least initially, one sentence. And so that would mean we'd want to count the number of independent clauses, and that's going to lead us to our correct answer. But before we get into this example or any of the other examples, just a little overview of what I mean by hard and soft punctuation. Okay, so hard punctuation is going to include the period, the semicolon, and I'll say usually the semicolon, you know, provided we're not punctuating a complex list. That's always going to be the exception, but I'll put a little asterisk there. The colon, the single dash, so not the pair of dashes, but the single dash, and then one other one that's kind of tricky here, but that's going to be the comma plus fanboys conjunction. So comma plus coordinating conjunction. And so all five of these are going to be things that could join two independent clauses. So we could have an independent clause, a period, another independent clause. We could have an independent clause, a semicolon, another independent clause. With the colon and the dash, they don't have to be followed by an independent clause, but they can be. They can be. And so both of these, you know, it's going to say the same thing, independent clause or not. And then the conjunction, I'll just use and as the example since that's the most common. But all of those are going to be legal ways to join two independent clauses. The soft punctuation marks would include just the comma, a comma plus a conjunctive adverb or a transitional adverb. And I have another video where I go into more detail about this, but these are going to be words such as however, therefore, consequently, additionally, and so on and so forth. And this would also apply if we added another comma. That's still not going to be a way that you can directly join two independent clauses. Now, if we just have a fanboys conjunction, I know that's not really punctuation at all, but I'm going to count it. So if we had something that just said and or but with no punctuation, okay, that would be soft. And I'll just say nothing at all would also count as soft punctuation. And so going up to this example here, looking at the answer choices first, we've got hard punctuation in answer choice A, soft, soft, and soft. So just a comma, just the conjunction, and nothing. So when you have this mix of one hard punctuation mark and three soft ones, chances are the hard one is going to be correct. But we still want to make sure we're reading the sentence. And so this person recently traveled to an ancient settlement in northern Ethiopia to study its elaborate temples carved into the hillside overlooking the valley. These structures are a testament to a sophisticated building tradition. Okay, so what tends to happen on these kinds of questions is things can get a little bit mushy in the middle in the sense that it isn't always initially clear whether this kind of phrase, in this case, carved into the hillside overlooking the valley, whether that is supposed to be a continuation of the first sentence or the beginning of the second sentence. This method that I'm recommending here allows you to sort of sidestep that potential confusion because if we can see here that we have two independent clauses, it doesn't really matter what's happening in between them in the sense that the only way that we can legally join two independent clauses is going to be with some hard punctuation here. Okay, and so we're going to have to pick A because that's the only one that, that can do this. But just to sort of flesh this out, this portion here carved into the hillside overlooking the valley, that's going to be a type of phrase, a participle phrase. That's going to be the first part of the second sentence. But again, you can't use just a phrase to link two independent clauses unless you also have the proper punctuation, which in this case is going to be the period. Now, it's not as common, but we can also see the reverse pattern. And this is going to be an example of that. So glancing down at the answer choices, we see that we've got the period, the semicolon, and then the comma plus conjunction, meaning that we have three options with 
hard punctuation and just one without it. And so that's a clue that we want to take a good long look at B because it is quite likely to be correct. And so reading the passage here, from a distance, the towering limestone formations of Vietnam's Ha Long Bay resemble massive solid cliffs rising from the emerald waters. When examined closely, however, the formations reveal themselves to be islands. Blank, intricate caves and tunnels carved over millennia by the relentless action of wind and water. And since this is a little bit complicated, I'm going to do some simplifying, crossing out prepositional phrases, and so, of wind and water, by the relentless action, and over millennia are all prepositional phrases. I'm actually going to leave that last one in because it gets a little awkward if it just says intricate caves and tunnels carved. But let's read it again. So, when examined closely, the formations reveal themselves to be islands. So that is an independent clause. But the portion that follows it is not an independent clause. So that portion would begin with D and extend up to millennia, or really the end of the sentence. And now you might look at this and ask, why isn't that an independent clause? Doesn't it have a subject and a verb? Mm, not really. Carved could be the simple past tense of carve, but the way it's being used here is as a past participle. In order for this to be an independent clause, it would need to say something like, the intricate caves and tunnels were carved over millennia. And so since we have an independent clause followed by something that is not an independent clause, a kind of complex phrase uh, here, uh, we do not want to use hard punctuation. And so that's what leads us to answer choice B. So let's look at some additional examples and we'll try to move through them a little bit more quickly. But I just want to emphasize this process of counting the number of independent clauses in the sentence with the blank. So in this case, we're just going to read that sentence. Okay, so antifreeze protein prevents some sort of issue allowing organisms to maintain their normal processes. AFP is found in high concentrations in the cells of polar fish. Okay, so once again, we have independent clause some other stuff, and then a second independent clause. So starting with AFP here, where we've got hard punctuation, soft, soft, soft. The correct answer is the hard punctuation because once again, we have two independent clauses. But again, that hard punctuation doesn't have to be a period. Looking at this example, again, focusing on the sentence with the blank, this property, hardness, makes diamonds valuable not only as gemstones, but also as materials in cutting-edge technology such as lasers. Scientists have used them to dissipate heat in high-performance electronics. Okay, independent clause, and that's going to include the little parenthetical. I mean, it would have still been an independent clause without that parenthetical, but... I'm just going to underline that, and then we've got the portion starting with scientists. So scientists have used them to dissipate heat in high-performance electronics. Once again, we have two independent clauses, so we need the hard punctuation. So ignoring the parentheses here, we've got soft, just a comma, soft, just and, and soft, nothing. And then one more example, one more example here. So again, looking at the sentence with the blank, they began this project by creating a protected area in the Pacific Ocean where damaged corals could recover. And that's an independent clause, but I'm not actually going to count that because we've got a semicolon there. So in this case, we can actually call this the sentence, you know, starting with within. Okay, so within two years, they had transformed the site into a thriving reef. So independent clause up to and including the word reef. Researchers from other institutions have since adopted similar techniques to replicate their success. So once again, we have two independent clauses. So the only way we can join them is going to be with hard punctuation. I wanted to make sure to include this one because here, 
Yes, the comma on its own is not a, quote, hard punctuation mark, but the combination of the comma and the conjunction functions that way in the sense that that is a way to legally join two independent clauses, whereas just a comma, just and, and nothing at all, those are not going to work. And so in this case, the fact that we have another independent clause at the beginning doesn't really matter. We could have just pretended that that was a period and that was a capital W. And so we'd have two independent clauses in that portion. And so B would be our correct answer.